Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 10, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and James chapter 3, verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. It helps us, God, and we're grateful for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 10. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said they always go astray in their hearts, their heart. They have not known my ways. Let me read that again. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 10. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. All right. And so. Um, the thing that the Holy Spirit, I feel like was leading me to in this scripture was the fact that, you know, we are naturally with our carnality, with our nature drawn away from the things of God, right? Idolatry, things of this world, things that cause us to, to have desires and, and those desires, um, through, through the testing, um, lead to temptations, right? Because we've been drawn away by our flesh. It says, therefore I was provoked with that generation. God is not pleased with these things, right? Things that draw us away from him. We have Christ as our righteous covering, but we need to be sure to stay and abide with Christ, right? If we don't actually walk with him, if we don't actually make him Lord over our lives, you know, that's truly going astray in your heart, right? You maybe once have been with him, but backslidden or turned away from him in his lordship. And, and that's how you go astray. And so it says, therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. They have not known my way. So what can we do about this, right? This falling away, this 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 constant draw of things in the world and and thing anything that pulls us away from God and towards the world right and anywhere else right and 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 the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 for the word of God is living and active sharper than it any two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and of spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that's how we are maintained, right? That is how we don't go astray in our heart by letting the word cut us. So God is, is desiring cutting right? He is a husbandman. He is a groomer. He is one who is going to cut you in the right places so you can grow better. For anyone who doesn't garden out there, one of the main um, things that I like to keep in mind when I was gardening a lot was um, you want to keep the main stem, right? The main thing, the main thing. You want everything to be fed from that main stem, but not have too many things drawing off that main vein, right? You don't want to have a huge another stem coming off of that main stem because then it's going to divert some of those nutrients to that big branch over there, right? So you want to keep things nice and nice and tight, nice and going all in the same direction. I'm thinking of like small potato, tomato plants or whatever right now. But um, when you're, when you're pruning suckers, they call them suckers. Those are things that draw the good things away, right? And we don't want suckers in our life. We don't want things that draw the good stuff that God is trying to pour into us out of us where it places of leakage places where virtue leaves us right maybe you're watching just too much tv maybe you're just listening to the wrong type of conversations with certain types of people at work when god has told you i need you to eat in your office i need you to go outside and eat because you are leaking right we need to let the word of god cut us where it needs to cut us, right? Because some things are drawing off of us. And yes, the cut hurts. It leaves an open wound, but only for a season, God is going to repair it and he's going to make you stronger in him. 
So it says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So imagine again, Sue knife, right? So remember, you know, the, the, the tighter, the cut, the, the sharper, the blade, the better the cut and the easier the healing is, right? So when a, a plastic surgeon is going in, he wants a very sharp blade. Why? Because the sharper the blade is, the less um, cells it's going to cut through, right? So if if I have a very thin, 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 sharp blade, I can cut very precisely where I want to. And so I can really direct the healing into a spot, right? So if you are very willing and you're very open to letting the word come in you, it can come in and precisely cut into that whole, that little spot and it could heal that spot, right? But when you're resistant, right? Just think of resistance and think of putting a person in handcuffs and they're constantly moving and they're constantly going, you're trying to stuff them into a police car. They're going to get all beat up, right? So you really want them to be still, right? You want to be still when God is doing Doing his work. Allow him to cut you. Allow him to have that direction and that flow that he's trying to grow you in. Don't resist him. Resist the devil, right? Don't, don't run away from God. Don't run away from the knife. The knife is a good thing. It's going to reveal things that are inside of you so that those things can be cut away. It says, um, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit. So it's going to reveal where that spirit is starting and where that flesh is starting, right? Okay, I need you to get rid of all of this because all of this is your flesh and it's drawing you away and your spirit is trying to rise up and grow up in me, right? So it says of joints and of marrow. So the difference between something being able to flexibly move around in your life, your flexibilities, whether or not you're stiff in an area or 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 you're you're very flexible or too flexible in an area and and the word is going to reveal those things and so uh, down to the marrow right and so what is the marrow the marrow is the life-giving force we want God to to be a part of the marrow because it's the thing that is feeding us and so daily we should seek him in his word amen it says and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So it's not only going to show you your thoughts and how your thought pattern may be diseased. Um, it's going to cut those things away. And it's also going to reveal your motives. And those motives can actually be really ugly, right? But the thing is, he doesn't want us to run away from it. Don't resist it, right? Yes, you have ugly motives hidden down in that old man that's still trying to linger, right? God is trying to kill off this old man. He wants you to see it. He wants you to see the motive of, of the way that you treat your children this way because you were abused. And so now that motive that you have um, is, is it's decrepit, it's diseased. And so you're treating your children this way because of that thing that happened to you. And so God can do those things. He can reveal those things through his word. Why? Because his word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So how do you fall away from God resisting the knife? resisting the cut, resisting the revealing, resisting it because you're scared because it's sharp and it's too much to deal with right now. And I'd rather hide that thing away inside of me and pretend like it's not there. So no one knows about my issues, right? You have to be open to the revealing. You have to be open to those things so that you can be drawn closer into him so that you can be directed in your growth and matured in your relationship with Christ. All right, so the third verse that the Lord gave me was James chapter 3, verse 16. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. So when you don't allow the cutting um, to take place, you can start to do things 
prematurely and immaturely, right? So if you resist cutting because you don't like pain, right? But then you see someone over here who is growing in their relationship and flourishing, jealousy can take place right? So the enemy can come in and sneak in and get a foothold in there because you're not allowing God in that area. So because the door is wide open, you, the enemy can come in, right? And and where that jealousy is and, and that self-ambition, that selfish ambition, that desire to be on the top, that desire to be the best, that desire to grow in areas that you are not mature or ready for, right? Where, where jealousy and selfish ambition exists there will be disorder and every vile practice so all sorts of chaos right you might see someone who's who got married and they've been working in the church and they grew and they've been operating in their gifts and all these things and then people get jealous and they run off and get married right and you just skip 50 steps right you, you just you just did things away out of order no 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 it says for where jealousy and selfish ambition exists there will be disorder in every vile practice, trying to keep up with people, trying to trying to get the same car, trying to do the same thing. No, no, no. God doesn't want us to fall away. God doesn't want to be provoked by our actions into doing things because the, our hearts have gone astray, right? And and we haven't known His ways. We haven't allowed Him to be Lord in our lives. God wants to be Lord. He wants to be intimate, close with us. He wants to prune us. He wants to gather us. He wants to pin us up. He wants to hold us up and allow the sun to get to us, right? If we suffer for a little while, we're going to reign with him, right? So we need to allow the cutting to take place and allow his, his sharpness to not, not cause offense, right? It, it needs to cause growth. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for your love for us. We praise you. We thank you for growth in our lives and fruitfulness. God, help us to not be afraid of your knife, Lord God. Lord God, help us to press into it as it presses into us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.